Welcome back. In the previous part, we finished off episode two, The Stolen Turnabout, which I was quite fond of. That was a very, very interesting story. Very simple, but very interesting. But now we're doing episode three, Recipe for Turnabout, and I'm wondering why she's wearing this maid's costume. And also, does that guy have a visor? I guess we'll see. So let us begin, Recipe for Turnabout. Yes. And that's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. It wasn't me. I swear it wasn't me. The evidence and testimony we have seen and heard are conclusive. The victim was alone at his table when he drank from that poisoned cup. No, you're wrong. I know what I saw. I, I, I saw. Makatama? TB? Saw someone else there. A man. He is the real killer. Wait a minute. And that certainly looks like Phoenix. Sort of? Why won't anyone believe me? Well, I'd say that pretty much wraps this case up, wouldn't you? Mr. Wright? This court finds the defendant? Guilty! Well, I failed that one quickly. This court is adjourned. What the hell happens? January 6, 10.03 AM, Wright & Co. Law Officers. Ah... The start of the new year always makes me feel like I can take on the whole world. I bet it does, Maya. So, I've decided that our resolution should be... Zvari! Take on the world! What do you think? Drop the Zvari. Sure, whatever, Maya, but I think maybe you've had more than enough mistletoe cake. Never. You've got to eat a lot of cake during New Year's. It's practically a tradition. Like watching the fireworks on TV or playing a board game. Hey. Wow. Detective Gumshoe. Happy New Year, Detective. Uh, likewise. Uh, now listen up, right. I wanna... Here's to another fruitful year of lawyer-police cooperation. Um, yeah, me too. Uh, Alright, pal. You've got some explaining to... Have you got a holiday present for me, Detective? Oh, uh, what? Well, I, uh, here, yeah, have this. It's really nothing much, but, uh, yay, thanks. Look, pal, we need to have a talk. Take a seat. Hey, what about Pearly? You haven't forgotten her present, have you? Uh, no, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, no. Uh, are you doing this on purpose? <laughs> yes, I'm busted. How did you like my first practical joke of the year? Very funny, pal. Now let's see how funny you think it is when I show you this. What is it? A magazine? Hey, I wanna see. Deadly poisoning brings guilty verdict. Defense attorney Wright trounced. T trounced? Let me see that. The defense attorney gave an almost childishly amateur performance yesterday. What the heck is this? It's a report, pal, about you. Listen to this. M Mr. Wright must take full responsibility for the ruling in this case. Well... And don't tell me you don't remember anything about it. But I don't remember anything about it. When was that issue from anyway? Um, December last year, which I guess makes it last month? Which makes it old news, you mean? I wasn't involved in a poisoning case in December. Oh. Hmm, so what do you think this is all about, Nick? If it wasn't you, pal, then that leaves only one possibility. No way. You don't mean... A f... A phony Nick? This must be Gumshoe's idea of a joke. Guess he's starting off the year with one too. Magazine clipping added to the court record. Ooh. So, what are you gonna do about it, pal? What do you mean, what am I gonna do about it? It's your fault that the judge found the defendant guilty in this case. 
My fault? How do you figure that? Because THE Phoenix Wright is super famous now. Well, maybe only sort of. Yeah, see what happens when you hotshots start getting too full of yourselves? But I didn't do anything wrong. At least, not that I can remember. Better make this right, pal. Now. And that means taking the case back to court, got it? Sounds like we've got our first case of the new year. Let's tackle it with Gusto. Who's Gusto? Is he a new character? I don't know. The judge already issued a guilty verdict once in this case. It's not going to be easy to get it overturned. I guess that New Year's resolution is going to have to wait until next year. So, you're taking the case, right? Good. I'm going to head over to the courthouse then. After that, I'll be back to the precinct. Uh, drop by if you need something, okay, pal? What does Charlie think? Guess people are starting to know the name Phoenix Wright. The client entrusted a case to me based on my reputation. I am kind of responsible. But why would someone want to impersonate me? What sort of guy would do that? Hmm. Well, then let's let's do do, do the customary. Eh? Charlie, a quiet, decorative plant. He's sort of a keepsake, something to remember me by. Sure, the office is a mess, but I never forget to water this little fella. Good old Charlie. An old movie poster. Apparently, this was the first movie that made Mia cry when she saw it, a long time ago. Maya watched it recently, and she cried all night too. Which, I guess, is why it's back up on the wall. I'll have to check it out one of these days. Difficult-looking legal books stand in a formidable row. They mock me. Actually, I've neglected them for so long that they've covered in a layer of dust. Guess I should at least pretend to read them once in a while. It's my desk. I don't get to use it much, so it's still super neat and tidy from when Pearls cleaned it. There is a giant building just outside the window. It's the Gatewater Hotel, a high-class luxury hotel. The chain is getting so rich that they bought a whole chunk of the next town over. And started building a huge theme park. It's going to be called Gatewater Land. I wonder if that bellboy is going to send me a greeting card this year, too. I like this just little, little, little tiny changes to the dialogue based on what's happening. Right. What to do? So, what's our first move? I guess we go down to the detention center and talk. Wait a sec, Nick. This person's behind bars because of you. Where it is, is going to be jumping at the chance to meet you, right? Hey, let's get one thing straight. It wasn't me. It was a fake me that did this. Hmm, I wonder if he looks exactly like you, you phony z... Zin... Oof? Zin... Zin... Oof? I mean... I hope not. Ooh. What kind of name for an evil double is Zin... Zinioff. Anyway, is there some way of saying that that's meant to be a joke? Because I can't... I, I can't picture it in my head. Someone let me know. Ah, Nick, I've got it. Xenomorph, maybe? I don't know. If you're going to ask whether I've got a twin brother, the answer is no. Mm, sport, sport. Any ideas? Did you notice Gumshi was acting weirder than usual? Is it just me? What do you mean? I mean, he was really worked up. Like a guy who just found out he's going to be a dad or something. Yeah, I guess he was acting kind of strange. Maybe he realized he's got strong feelings for you, Nick. Considering how we interact, I seriously doubt that, Maya. Well, if he wasn't nervous because of you, then maybe it's because of our new guilty client. Mm-hmm. Not got much to present here, so... Article from December 5th, it says I was trounced and my client was found guilty. Can't believe you've got an impersonator. I can't either. Ugh. Ah, but look on the bright side. Only famous stars have people impersonating them. This isn't funny, Maya. It's not just an impersonation. This guy stole my identity. Someone may have been wrongly convicted as a result. The only thing I, I can think right now is, like, Godot, because he's covering his face, so it's like, what does he look like under that? Guess you should have gone into showbiz, huh, Nick? Uh, I will never understand how your mind works, Maya. Alright, let's move on over to the detention center. 
January 6th, detention center. Visitor's room. This is so nerve-wracking waiting to meet our new client. I wonder just what kind of person you tricked and got found guilty. Keep it down, Maya. What kind of talk could ruin me. Ah! How could you, Mr. Wright? How could you do this to me? They put me in solitary. I haven't been able to stop crying. Now, aren't, aren't you, uh... Yes, I am. I'm totally and utterly let down. Uh, you, you're, are you... Don't pretend you don't know me. It's me, Maggie. Remember? Maggie... Bird. Maggie Bird. Ah. I'm gonna say it wrong. Deal with it. Maggie Bird. She's the policewoman I defended that one time. She was accused of murdering her lover. He was a cop, too. What are you doing in here? Didn't I get you acquitted? Oh, sure, very funny. After that fifth-rate defense job, you come in here and start making jokes? You better hurry up and tell her what happened, Nick. Oh, I see. So that's where we stand right now. I'm sorry you've been caught up in another murder. My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Vaguely remember her saying the exact same thing last time. But I don't mind. What's one more disaster in my life? At least now the real Mr. Wright's in here with me. I won't let the world keep me down, sir. Well, that's, that's, that's a good attitude to have. Let's, let's examine him. Again. This guard monitors the visitor's room. I bet they don't get too many waitresses in here. Waitresses, yeah. He looks like he's getting a bit restless. Maggie Bird. So, how come you're dressed like that, Maggie? Unless you, you look so sharp in that police uniform. Hm. I was fired after that incident last year. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't mind one bit. I enjoyed being on the force, but I think it was time for me to move on. So, what do you do now? In the second act of The Life of Maggie Beard, I'm playing the role of a waitress. A waitress? Yes, in a French restaurant. It's a small place, but it's quite fashionable. My charming smile and shapely figure came through for me. And the owner, Mr. Armstrong, hired me straight away, sir. And then you got into this mess straight away, right? Yeah, you could put it that way. What happened? This whole mess started on the 3rd of last month. And it happened at Tres Bien. Tres Bien? Uh, yes, it's a restaurant where good service and friendly smile are always included. Oh. Hmm, there we go with the visor look. And the CD there. I feel like the CD is going to be important. I mean, this guy does the same hairstyle as Nick, but... Oh, and we know what the TB is now. Uh, there were two men at the table, both drinking coffee. And then... See, the coffee is what makes me think it's... Godot. No one else would drink that vile stuff. One of the men slipped some poison into the victim's cup. And the victim took just one sip and was gasping for air. I was so shocked I passed out. Hey, hold on there, Maggie. What? Keep calling the guy the victim. Didn't you know the guy who was killed? Not at all. I'd never even seen the guy before. Oh. So she wouldn't have had a motive to kill him then, I guess. I thought that's the one thing you needed, game. Hmm? And the other man, the killer. You saw him, right? Of course. A good waitress must be attentive to the clientele. So, you saw the killer, but you are found guilty of the crime anyway. How come? You tell me, Mr. Wright. Ugh. Guess the answer to my question is my phony. Anyway, she saw the killer. Better see if I can get a description of the guy. Blue suit, tie, points a lot, black hair, slicked back. Sometimes, as I say, coffee cup on his head. Very strange. A guilty verdict. So, if you saw the murderer, why were you still convicted? Because no one else saw. Saw what? 
and the other man. The one who put the poison in the victim's coffee. Everyone testified that way. Mr. Armstrong, the customer, everyone. The victim was sitting alone at his table the whole time. How's that possible? Oh no, but nobody, not one person, would believe me, sir. Where is the CD in that case? Even Phoenix Wright, my one last hope for a fair trial, failed me. What a pathetic defense. My granny could have done a better job. Look, that wasn't me, okay? And then... They found something a bit incriminating in my apron pocket. What? The poison. A small bottle of poison. Mm-hmm. The poison that is, I'm thinking goes back to the first trial in this game. What? Poison? It was in your pocket? Well, I passed out when the victim collapsed. The killer must have slipped the poison into my pocket when I was unconscious. And no one else saw this other guy. No, sir. That's what everyone said, but I don't see how they could have missed him. Mm-hmm, the other guy. How's the one who took the coffee to the two men? Oh, and what was your impression of them? Well, when I first saw them, I kind of thought they might be in the music industry. I wonder if it's something to do with her wearing glasses. Like maybe it's a projection or something like that. But only certain people can see because she's wearing glasses. Maybe the light hit her eyes the, a certain way, and that's the reason he's wearing the visor, so he can see this hologrammatic person. Maybe. That's the only thing I can think of right now, and it's like, that's a stretch. It's just, why the visor? In music? How come? Well, one of them had some sort of earpiece. And an emo musician's look about him. And there was a sample CD on the table, sir. An earpiece and a sample CD, huh? Did you get a look at the CD at all? It had a band's name written on it. I think it was MC something? They must have been preparing for their debut, I guess. MC. Alright. So it was a band CD. Maybe a promo disc? Maybe it was MC Screwdriver. Get serious, Maya. Did you buy the CD of a group named that? Mm, what was the name of that group again? MC Hacksaw? No, MC... And what about the killer? What did he look like? Well, I, um, I don't really remember. I knew that he was a young man, well built like the victim, really. Okay, so, let's see about this. Oh, yeah, I need to ask you about this. Hey, this article is about my case. Can you tell me anything about the guy who is pretending to be me? Yes, sir. It was the morning after I'd been arrested. I met you in the visitor's room here. You were wearing one of your super sharp suits. Me? Yes, you, Mr. Wright. Uh. Hey, Maggie. What's my evil double... Ayam? Like, because it'd be my, I'm trying to think like how you say my backwards. Like. I am? I am here, too? No, I don't remember a phony you, Maya. Oh. It would have been so cool. You got really worked up and passionate. I'm going to get you cleared. Cleared a disc crime, you said. Okay, I get the picture. You met me in person before. So how come you didn't realize the guy wasn't the real me? I guess, looking back now, it was a little strange. Only a little. Well, okay, so you were a bit taller than normal. And you looked a bit shady. And your voice was a bit weird. Oh, and you had this kind of funny accent, and... So the guy was nothing like me then. But he had your spiky hair and blue suit. Is that all it takes for someone to imitate me? How about everyone else in the courtroom? Like the judge and the observers. Didn't they realize he was imposter? Everyone had these big question marks on their faces. But it seemed that no one wanted to say anything, sir. Why? This case just keeps getting weirder and weirder. It's to right. Do you think it's possible to get a retrial? Probably. The court ruled in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. So we should be able to get a retrial. Um, Mr. Wright? Do you think we'll win next time, sir? 
My life has been a full course of meal of bad luck, complete with defeat for dessert. Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, whoa! I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles. I don't know how you feel. Gotten sick from all sorts of foods. That's normal. Failed at almost every test I've taken. Experienced almost every kind of disaster. Even landed a phony lawyer when I had the misfortune of being accused of murder. But I will survive because Maggie Bird always lives to fight another day. And one day I'll find it. Just you wait and see, sir. I'll find that one single moment of good luck. Uh, Zin Try to like read it backwards now. Oh, it's Phoenix backwards. <laughs> I was like, like it was very much like okay with the Maya backwards. Like oh, it's it's Phoenix backwards. So it's Zinioff. Zinioff is like yeah. Zinioff is really gonna pay for this. What are you staring at me like that for? Maya's right. I don't really normally see the word Phoenix backwards. It's threw me off. Wherever is it is that thought it was a good idea to use my name and get an innocent girl convicted of murder had better watch out. We'll find him. Don't you worry. We'll get Zinny off for you. Thank you. Oh, I'll tell you where Tres Bien is then. Tres? Ah, right, right. The, the restaurant where the murder took place. Yes, sir. When you go, please tell Mr. Armstrong I said hi. Sure. All right, Nick. Let's go check out this restaurant and its food. And the food. All right. Well, let's go. Let's go buy a meal then. January six, Tresbian. We didn't clear up the crime scene at this point. But the trial's over, mate. From your point of view. Wow! Look at this place. Look. More like smell. It is with the suffocating scent of flowers in here. Then again, girls like that kind of thing, right? Actually, I'm not all that into it. No one's coming to see us. Maybe there's no one here. Don't be silly, Maya. This is a restaurant and it's open for business. Hello? Anyone there? I believe it. There really isn't anyone here. Perfect. Let's get intrusive. What? If there's no one here, we can take anything we want. Yeah, I suppose we can. What? That's not how that works, but okay. It's a rack full of fashion magazines, and they're all in French. Why don't you try wearing something a bit more... Cheek! Some time, huh, Maya? Yeah, I guess I could. I'm always in my acolyte clothes, aren't I? It'd be fun to wear normal clothes every now and then. Hmm, there's something stuffed in behind the rack. Looks like a sports paper to me. Hey, and look at this. Someone scribbled a little doodle on the pages. MC Bomber. And um, look who else we got there as well. MC Bomber and one, two, three, four, five zeros. Yes, but Master Mask. A hundred thousand dollars? Maybe. I wonder what MC Bomber is supposed to be. This paper, it's from December 3rd. This paper's from the day of the poisoning. What? Sports paper added to the court record. Paper from the day of the murder. This has got to be a clue. Should see if I can find out some more about this paper. Hmm. It's a rack full of fashion magazines and they're all in French. Why don't you try wearing something? We found that sports paper behind this magazine rack earlier. I better try to find out everything I can about it. Actually, um, look at that court record. Again, it's like, why is there a bomb there? The 500,000 and why is Master Mask in the bottom left? Is that even going to have any relevance? I don't know. Nothing about the picture. It's the restaurant's front entrance. There's a sign hanging on the door written in French. It probably says open or closed. It must be one or the other, but I don't know which, as I don't know jacques about French. Look at the little trinkets tucked away in here. Bet Mr. Armstrong collected all these personally. Let's see, a bouquet of flowers, 
sorry, a bucket of flowers, some potpourri, and look, fine bone china cups. I never knew you were so cultured. Come on, Maya, this is common knowledge. Any Joe Schmo knows this much. Indeed. Look, it's one of those magical boxes that spits out money. You know, you're the only person who would ever describe a cash register in that way. Alright. The mute. Oh, what was that? Ch choice. Yeah, there we go. Wow, it's a beautiful winter wonderland out there. Really? Cool, I love snow. Let me see. Huh? It's not white. It's not even snowing. Got you. I was only kidding, Maya. Nick. There are lies that are okay to tell, and there are lies that are definitely aren't. All I did was tell an itty bitty white lie about non existent white snow. Oh dear. This table is set nicely. Just needs a customer. What do you think this flower is, Nick? Let's see. Uh, it doesn't look like a tulip, and it's not a sunflower, I don't think. Don't, even I could have told you that. Well, those are the only kinds of flowers I know. I can never tell a lawyer, not a botanist. Hey, Star Trek reference. This restaurant has partitions that separate the tables. When you're seated at a table, you can only see the tables to your right or left. Aha, uh -huh, that's going to be relevant then. This must be the table where the murder occurred. Yes, sir. All this police tape all around it. And that stain must be from the poisoned coffee. And go licking the tablecloth, okay, Maya? Why would I lick it? I'm not a cat, you know. Why can I picture you doing just that? Hmm. Is that it then? I don't see anything else. We've not got anyone turn up or anything like that. Okay then. Smooth, I suppose. Detention center, and then nothing. All right, let's go over to the criminal affairs department. January 6th, police station. Criminal affairs department. It's been ages since we came down to the precinct, huh, Nick? Looks like Gumshoe isn't around. He's got it so easy leaving everyone else to do the work. No, he's out there somewhere. My bet is on the courthouse. He's probably trying to arrange the retrial of this case. Guess that means we should go to the detention center and chat with our killer, huh? For being convicted without a fair trial. I'm not sure killer is the right label. Okay, that feels we need to go back then, so maybe what we're meant to do is present the paper that we got to her. Oh, a sports paper. Let's see, let's see. Did Guts and Braum managed to defend his heavyweight title. Sorry, Maggie, that paper is actually a month old. It's from the day of the moider. And Gutson got knocked out yesterday, I'm afraid. Oh, no. Found this paper in the magazine rack at Tresbian. Really? That's strange. Tresbian doesn't get newspapers. Mr. Armstrong says he's not really fond of them. And maybe one of the customers left it behind? Anyway, what I want you to take a look at is this scribble here. Aha! That's it, sir! MC Bomber. That was the name that was written on the CD. Just as I thought. I guess it wasn't MC Screwdriver after all, huh? So, that $100,000 must be a down payment for a record deal, right? If someone gave me $100,000, I'd sing for sure. The Master of Crane, or the Spirit Song, or even Maya's theme. Um, okay, Maya. So, the sample CD was on the victim's table. That means this newspaper may have belonged to the victim. You're right. So the victim left this behind on the day of the murder, huh? I think we better step up the investigation. No you, Nick? I think we should. Which I assume means go back to Tresbian. Unless you've got something to talk about. Nope! Alright, so let's go back to Tresbian.